Welcome back to Linear Algebra at Marianopolis College. In the previous video, we saw that row reduction is a method of transforming a matrix in a nice, into a nicer form using the three elementary row operations. In this video, I want to discuss what we mean by a nicer form. Section 3.2.2, .2, Echelon Forms. Given the augmented matrix of a linear system, we can reduce the matrix using elementary row operations, which preserves the solution to the set to the linear system. The goal is to reach either row echelon form which we'll denote using REF or reduced row echelon form which we'll denote by RREF. In the previous video, the reduced matrix that we saw was in reduced row echelon form. Let's define both of these carefully. A matrix is in row echelon form if two things hold. First, all rows of zeros are at the bottom of the matrix. This is provided that there are any rows of zeros. Many matrices won't have any rows of zeros in their row echelon form. The second condition is that in each non-zero row, the first non-zero entry, which is called the leading entry, is in a column to the left of any leading entries below. When I think about a matrix in row echelon form, I have the following picture in my head. First, I have some leading entries. Here, the leading entries I've represented with diamonds. Because they're leading entries, I know that they can't be zero. So we'll say that the diamond could be any real number except zero. In this matrix that I have in my head when I'm thinking about row echelon form, I don't need to worry about the first condition because it doesn't have any rows of zeros. Of course, it could have a row of zeros, and if it did, it would have to be at the bottom, like this. A second row of zeros would be fine. We would still meet the first condition. But let's not worry about that for now. The second condition is a bit trickier for us to check. So let's carefully look at what it says. It says that the first non-zero entry in a column has to be to the left of any leading entries below it. So if we look at the first non-zero entry of the first column, that's gonna be this diamond. Notice that this diamond is to the left of the other three diamonds. Therefore, the condition is met for the first leading entry. We need to check that the condition is met for all leading entries. For the second leading entry, it's also to the left of all leading entries below. For the third leading entry, it's also to the left of the leading entry below. And for the last leading entry, it's the last one, so we don't need to worry about it. One thing that this forces with these leading entries is that any numbers below the leading entries in the same column have to be zeros. Otherwise, we would violate the condition two. Finally, we don't actually know anything about the stars. There's nothing in condition one or two that tells us which numbers the stars could be. And so we'll say that star could be any real number. A matrix is in reduced row echelon form if one and two hold. So that means any matrix that's in reduced echelon form must also be in row echelon form. And two more conditions must also hold. The first is that the leading entry in each row is a one. Notice that in this matrix, the leading entry of each row is a one. The other condition that we add is that each column containing a leading one has zeros above and below. 
So when I look below any leading one, I have zeros. And when I look above any leading one, I have zeros. Again, we're still left with some free spaces, which I've used stars to denote, and the star could be any real number. Let's look at some examples. Determine if each matrix is in row echelon form, reduced row echelon form, or neither form. Our primary purpose has been to look at the echelon forms of augmented matrices, but note that any matrix, augmented or not, can be put into row echelon form or reduced row echelon form. Before watching my solutions, I recommend that you pause the video and give these a try on your own. Let's start by looking at the first matrix. I'm going to check first if this matrix is in row echelon form, and then we can check if it's also in reduced row echelon form. The first thing to do is to check condition 1, which says that any rows of zeros must be at the bottom of this matrix. Since there are no rows of zeros, condition 1 is met. The second condition involves the leading entries of the matrix. So I'll identify the leading entry of the first row, which is this 1, and the leading entry of the second row, which is the 2. Condition 2, remember, says that the leading entry of the first row, the 1, has to be to the left of the leading entry of the second row, the 2. That means that this matrix is definitely in row echelon form because conditions 1 and 2 are met. To check for reduced row echelon form, we have to also check condition 3. Condition 3 says that any leading entry must be a 1, but this leading entry here is not a 1, so it's not in reduced row echelon form. Looking at the max matrix, I'll do the same thing. Again, no rows of zeros, so condition one is met. For condition two, I identify the leading entries. They have the correct formation as before. This time, condition three is also met because both of these leading entries are ones. Now I need to look at condition four. Condition four says that any numbers below a leading entry or above a leading entry have to be a zero. This 2 is not a 0, so this matrix is not in reduced row echelon form, but it is in row echelon form. Looking at the next matrix, we'll do the same thing. No rows of zeros. The leading entries are 1 and 1. They have the correct configuration, and they're both 1s. So conditions 1, 2, and 3 are met. For condition 4, I check numbers below the leading entry and above the leading entries, both zeros. This means that this matrix is actually in reduced row echelon form. For this next matrix, I do have a row of zeros, and that row of zeros is in the middle of the matrix. That means that it's in neither row echelon form nor reduced row echelon form. The next matrix also has a row of zeros, but this time it's at the bottom of the matrix, and so condition 1 is met. Next, I identify the leading entries. The first leading entry is a minus 1, and the second leading entry is a 1. The formation is correct, and so I know that condition 2 is met, and so this matrix is in row echelon form. It's not in reduced row echelon form because this leading entry minus 1 is not a 1. For the next matrix, again, we have a row of zeros, and it's at the bottom, so condition 1 is met. For condition 2, I check the leading entries. They have the correct formation, so condition 2 is met. Further, both of those leading entries are 1s, which means that condition 3 is met. For condition 4, I check the numbers both above and below the leading entries, and I see all zeros. This means that the matrix is in reduced row echelon form. For this next matrix, there's no rows of zeros, so condition 1 is met. Next, I'll identify the leading entries, 1, 3, 2, and 4. Notice that the 1 in the first row is to the right of the 3, which is in the second row, which is to the right of the 2, which is in the third row, which is to the right of the 4 in the fourth row. This configuration is not correct. Therefore, 
the matrix isn't in row echelon form, nor in reduced row echelon form. For the next matrix, I don't have any rows of zeros, so condition one is met. I'll identify the leading entries, one, one, and one. Their configuration is correct, and they're all ones, so both conditions two and three are met. I still have to check condition four. Condition four passes for columns one and column three, but it doesn't pass for column four because of this one. So what this means is that conditions one and two are met, so the matrix is in row echelon form, but because condition four fails, it's not in reduced row echelon form. Finally, the last example, we can see again that there's no rows of zeros, so condition one is met. I identify the leading entries. They have the correct configuration, meaning condition two is met. They're all ones, meaning condition three is met. So all I have to do is check the last condition. So I need to look below every single leading entry, and I see that below every single leading entry are zeros. I need to check above every single leading entry, above every single leading entry are zeros. And so finally, this matrix meets all four conditions, so it's in reduced row echelon form.